it is possible to preferentially work the lower region of the abs more than the upper region. And in fact, you need to if you want to develop your lower core, get that nice V shape, and prevent lower back pain. But this is not how you do it. Nor is this, or this, or this, or any other leg lift type exercise. Because guess what? The lower abs don't lift the legs. The rectus abdominis, what we call the abs, originates from up on the ribs and then travels down through multiple subsections separated by tendons. And then the lowest subsection of the abs inserts right here on what we call the ramus of the pelvis, aka the bottom front of the hips. Not anywhere on the femur or a leg bone. So all of the leg lifting exercises in the world will not directly engage the lower abs or any region of the abs at all. Instead, you'll be working the hip flexors while the abs just function as core stabilizers, which works the upper and lower regions equally. Now, for all of you doubters out there who are saying to yourself, ah, that's BS, the abs are all one muscle, it's impossible to selectively target the upper or lower regions. Well, you need to get with the times on region-specific hypertrophy, and in a minute, I'll present all the scientific evidence needed to completely blow your doubts out of the water. But first, I'm going to show you exactly how to completely shred your lower abs in a way that I guarantee you've never felt before, and nobody who actually does what I'm about to show you will ever again say that you can't target your lower abs. Both of the techniques I'm going to demonstrate rely on a single principle, and it is the one and only movement that will directly engage the lower abs and work them more than any other muscle. It's called posterior pelvic tilt, or PPT. If you think of your pelvis as a bowl full of water, Rotating the bottom of your pelvis backwards so that water would fall out the front is called anterior pelvic tilt. And rotating the bottom forward so that water would fall out the back is called posterior pelvic tilt. And remember that the lower abs attach to the bottom front of your pelvis. So when they contract, they rotate the bottom of your pelvis forwards, performing posterior pelvic tilt. So PPT done properly is the only way to preferentially target your lower abs. And here are the two best techniques that exist for doing exactly that. The first one requires a little bit of setup, but it is a thousand percent worth it. You'll need a rack with a pull-up bar and adjustable height barbell holders, along with a barbell itself, and ideally a barbell pad. I also highly recommend elbow or wrist straps so that your lower ab work isn't limited by your grip strength. You'll position the barbell at a height that's level with the small of your back when you're hanging from the bar so that it rests right above your hips. Then you'll bend your knees and perform a full range of motion posterior pelvic tilt, using your lower abs and nothing else to rotate your pelvis forward and up around the bar as far as you can, then slowly go through the eccentric phase back down, which is actually more important than the concentric phase, until your pelvis is in an anteriorly tilted position with your butt curving around the bar, and repeat. Keeping your knees bent at the same angle throughout the motion can help reinforce to your brain that you're not just lifting your legs here. Any leg flexion that happens is incidental. What matters is the rotation of your pelvis and that alone. If you don't have a pad, you can also just wrap a yoga mat or anything similar around the barbell for the same effect. But you do need something, because the purpose of the pad isn't just to make it more comfortable. It also serves to push your pelvis a little farther forward than your hands, and prevents your body from swinging backwards, both of which increase the muscle moment on the lower abs. Now to understand what I mean by that, let's contrast this with your standard leg lifts. Not only is the vast majority of the energy and tension going into the hip flexors instead of the lower abs, but without the back support, your body inevitably rocks backwards as you bring your legs up. And that backwards motion makes what little PPT you might be able to get completely ineffective since the muscle moment is so small. Think of a bicep curl where your elbow shifts back behind your body compared to a curl with your elbow staying still. Despite the same elbow flexion happening with the same weight, you'll get far less tension on the biceps with the elbow moving back. So the back support, together with the focus on PPT instead of hip flexion, are what makes this exercise 100 times more effective at working the lower abs than any leg lift exercise out there. And trust me, you will feel it. Using body weight alone will leave your lower abs sore for a week after the first time you do it. But if you're ready to step it up, you can add a medicine ball between your knees to even further increase the resistance. Now, you may not always have the time or equipment to set up that exercise, which is why I also developed a technique that allows you to get the same effect using only a bench. You'll lie on your back, but unlike with leg lifts, you'll position yourself so that your hips are hanging off the end of the bench, supporting yourself with your hands behind your head. Then you'll let your hips drop down into an anteriorly tilted position, making sure your feet don't touch the ground, then perform full range of motion PPT using only your lower abs as far as you can go, then slowly go through the eccentric phase back down and repeat. Again, keeping your knees bent at the same angle throughout the motion can help to keep the focus on the pelvis and not the legs. 
Even if you do the hanging technique, you'll want to integrate this one into your routine as well, because the hanging version places the 90 degree point of max resistance on the lower abs towards their point of max fiber contraction, or the end of the PPT range of motion, while the supine version shifts the point of max resistance closer to their point of max fiber extension, or the beginning of the PPT range of motion, and studies have shown that the degree of contraction or the amount of fiber overlap during an exercise affects how the muscles develop, and variety is key, so make sure that you use both techniques and you will feel a significant difference in how the two work your lower abs. One variation of the supine technique is done on a decline bench, which will place less tension on the max extension phase, but more on the max contraction phase. And the easiest variation would be to do it with your hips on the bench. With this version, you're completely cutting out the hip drop phase, removing the max extension half of the lower abs range of motion, so it won't be quite as effective, but it can be a good place for beginners to start. Now for the doubters. Yes, the rectus abdominis fibers do run from top to bottom. And yes, when you work any region of the abs, all regions will be activated at least to some degree, but that degree can be and is drastically different under a variety of conditions. How is that possible? Well, for one, the tendinous intersections through the abs make it so that each subregion effectively has its own origin and insertion points. Two, different regions of the abs are innervated by different nerves, which allows them to be selectively activated, which is why I'm able to do this, selectively contracting the upper, middle, and lower regions of my abs independently, which has even been proven in EMG studies of belly dancers, which I might take up as a second career. Third, even muscles that are innervated by a single nerve such as the biceps or triceps, still display region-specific activation and non-homogeneous hypertrophy. Studies have shown that a plethora of factors, including the specific angle of resistance, the type of exercise, the range of motion used, the type of contraction, speed of contraction, and more, all influence which region of a given muscle fiber is worked the most. Let's look at just some of the proof of this for the abs specifically. A 2009 study used EMG recording to show that curl-ups resulted in greater upper ab activation, while a jackknife exercise, which looks similar to this, resulted in greater lower ab activation. Another study by different researchers showed the same upper ab results, but found that lower ab activation was only statistically significantly higher than the upper abs when sufficient posterior pelvic tilt was used. Another study found that the upper and lower abs fatigued at different rates, depending on the exercise performed. They concluded that changes in body position and exercise intensity create different demands for the different portions of the rectus abdominis muscle, and exercise variation is an effective method for targeting the different regions. But you may ask, are we sure that different levels of activation actually lead to different amounts of growth? Good question, and yes, we are. For example, one study published just last year used a technology called extended field of view ultrasound to show that there are at least three distinct sections of the abs, upper, middle, and lower, and that doing sit-ups at three different angles resulted in different amounts of growth, both muscle thickness and length, in each of the three regions. And that's with the same exact exercise in all three cases, just different angles. So imagine the variation that completely different exercises have on subregion differentiation. Another recent study took it a step further using the same technology to prove that there are actually four distinct functional regions of the abs, and that exercises which require movement of the lower body result in significantly more growth in the lower two regions than in the upper two. So the next time that somebody tells you that it's not possible to preferentially work the lower or upper region of the abs, just send them this video. But why are so many people still misled about this despite all the evidence? Well, for example, here's a pretty recent study that had participants perform an upper ab exercise and a lower ab exercise, and ultimately concluded that there was no statistical difference between upper and lower ab thickness as a result. But want to take a guess at what their lower ab exercise was? You got it. Straight leg lifts with the pelvis flat on the bench. So duh, you're not going to find a difference. The lower abs don't attach to the legs. All the abs are doing there is stabilizing the core, which, as we went over, it works the upper and lower regions equally. Had they used an effective posterior pelvic tilt exercise, the results would have been drastically different. And again, if there's any doubt still in your mind, just go and do the two techniques that I showed you with proper form, and all doubt will vanish. Now, to fully optimize your lower ab training, you need to integrate these techniques into a comprehensive core training program that properly targets not only every region of the abs, but also your external and internal obliques, and your transverse abdominis, all based completely on cutting edge exercise science. And that is where the Dr. Gaines Total Core program comes in. Both the Hypertrophy series and Shred series versions of this program were launched earlier today. Use the link that I'll put in the video description along with the code YouTube-15 for 15% off either program, 
or you can use that same code for 15% off the All Access Premium Membership for life, which gives you unlimited access to all current and future Dr. Gaines online programs. And for more completely free top tier fitness content, join Fitness Tip Friday, my extremely popular weekly newsletter that is always short, significant, and science-based. Guys, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting that like button, leaving me a comment below, and be sure you're subscribed and have those new video notifications turned on so that you don't miss any of the mind-blowing videos I have planned over the next few months. Mahalo, my friends. Until next time.